Now, J. Don, do you have any magic in your anything magic about your uh, leader links? No. About no. When I my magic is I set all I tie all this stuff up sitting in the chair watching TV and my magic is and and cut it right here. I, I, yeah. But and I tie Palomar knots. So if I if I pull this much off, by the time I tie two Palomars, it'll be down to this length right here, like Paul's talking about. Okay. All right. This is extraordinarily weird. But I like it, and uh, this is a, this is. I've never seen anybody else do this. But um, if you want to push crankbaits, and I started doing this in the summer, or if you want a long line troll crankbaits, well, we talked about that the last time he was here. I started doing that down at Cedar Creek during the summer when fishing gets really, really slow. Um, I started uh, trying to push crankbaits, and it was kind of a lot of fun. It's the same setup as this. But you, I promise you, you will, you will throw this into a, into a rod locker box or in the back of the boat one time. <laughs> and after an hour of cutting and slicing and pulling and everything else, you'll go to Lowe's and buy a piece of three inch or four inch tubing to use that thing in. You buy that right there. And, and other than that, it's the exact same thing as we've got here. Okay. Take the, take the crankbait, hook it in. Unwind it. You got, you got you one. Crack gauge baits for crappie. Or yeah. Crappie. yeah, crappie, crappie. Do the exact same thing. Set it up just like that. On a crankbait, I'll use a four ounce weight, big weight. A lot of guys go, like I say, six and eight, depending on. With a four ounce weight, you control about a mile and a half an hour, which I think is normally about right. Mile and a half. Close to two miles an hour, and the and much straight down. If you need to start trolling faster, two and a half to three miles an hour, you're gonna have to use more weight because otherwise it's, it's gonna be it further back behind you in the boat. Is that on a 12 foot rod? Uh, that's that's on uh, my when I start trolling this much weight, I've got 14 foot Wally Marshall tight lines, and they'll handle this much weight without just doubling over clear into the water. Um, wind up having them get all tangled together when you get fish on get a sand if you run through a school of sand bass then you might as well just park yourself and <laughs> and, <laughs> and and just and get your scissors out and start cutting and throw all this junk in the bottom of the boat and start over. Uh, yeah and that's the biggest problem that's the biggest problem pushing baits. You've got you need to be in a situation where you're pretty sure you know where the top you are and, and on a lake where you've where you've pretty much figured out that the crop you're occupying different uh, depths. And a lot of times in the summer on Cedar Creek, uh, the crop in the sand bed won't be at the same depth. A lot of times they will be, but if you can find them at different depths and you can run along, and about 90% of the time you'll catch crappie instead of sand bass. So, um, I think that's all I had. You never use your big motor for that? Or you use I don't. I always use a trolling motor and I always watch my miles per hour on the GPS. Um, I know that some guys, and you can put anything on the end out here. I know guys that use uh, like MEP spinners, the Comet Minnow, you know with that little plastic minnow on the end. They'll put MEP spinners on this, use 8 to 10 ounces of weight and just crank that big engine, run two and a half, three miles an hour and just brrr, and here they go pushing them big old crank, uh, the big old spinners out through there. In the spring year when fish are starting to move shallow in lakes that don't have a lot of timber. You don't want to troll that through a whole lot of timber. Um, but a lake like Cedar Creek or some other similar lakes. Cedar Creek is perfect because there's there's kind of some milk runs along certain banks where there's where there's about 50 yards of brush pile and they're all about the same depth and most of those brush piles have worn down to where they're only a foot or, foot or two tall off the bottom and you know exactly that that brush pile is sitting in 16 foot of water and it's 14 foot deep on the top of that. You go out there and get all these things set up. You peel off to ride at about 13 to 14 feet and just take off and you're just and you're pulling that crankbait just buzzing it right across the top of those brush piles. Jay Don, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you. You are